Well, I just did a video recently about rim brakes and disc brakes, and I basically explained how rim brakes and disc brakes really stop at exactly the same distance. Now, obviously you can have all different types of weather scenarios, but if you just compare one to the other on a dry, clean road, and you ride down the road and you try to stop as quickly as you can, the bikes are gonna stop the same time. Okay, you might have person's reactions and things like that that have some very small variance, but the distance is going to be the same as far as the bike's ability to stop. And when I put that video up, man, people just lost their mind. And I even had one guy demanding I take down the video because it's just false. Now, why is it that people have this, this emotional thing? Like when you say that rim brakes stop just as quick as disc brakes. I mean, I'm not even saying that rim brakes are better than disc brakes. I'm just saying they're the same. And people just like freak out because they go, oh, disc brakes must be better. So what I'm going to do is, is it obviously what I explained before didn't really hit the mark. So I'm going to talk about brakes in general and where we came from back in the 60s when cars had drum brakes and that's what was the system on cars and how they progressed through power assist and disc brakes. So let's roll the intro and let's get into it. Now, many, many years ago, when I was a younger fella, because I'm a little bit older than 29 years, I've been 29 for many years now, so guys, it's uh, it's tough being 29 year after year, but um, I'm still 29. But uh, way back when, in the 60s, cars had all-round drum brakes. They had drum brakes on the back of the car and drum brakes on the front of the car, and they had no power assist. That was just the way it was. They were hydraulic, but there was no power assistance involved in the braking system. Now, cars then could, it, it took obviously force, you had to push up against the back seat and push on the brakes, but cars could lock the wheels up with drum brakes and make the cars skid. It was quite possible, it wasn't not impossible. So the cars could reach the limit of their braking because once the wheels lock up and the wheels are skidding, then it's just the friction between the tire and the road that's slowing you up. There is, you cannot get any more braking performance from the car. So the physics of that is that the car weighs a certain amount, the tires have a certain grip on the surface, and that is the limiting factor of how fast you can brake. And what people really don't seem to get, they go, oh yeah, but they go, it's, that's the physics, but in real world, there is no real world. Physics is the real world. That's why it's called physics. It's the physical world. Like the earth sucks, it sucks. Like that's what gravity is. That's why we can use maths because maths is based on a rule and the rules are of the world and the world is the physics. So because the world behaves always in a certain way, we can use mathematics to express those. So if we wanna build a bridge or we wanna build a road or whatever, we can use maths to design that before we build it because we know that the physical nature of the world is consistent. So then we moved into the early 70s and they started putting power assisted brakes on the cars. They were still drum brakes at first, which meant that when you put your foot on the pedal, it was a lot easier to push the pedal. So it felt like the brakes were more powerful, but they actually weren't. They were still just drum brakes. And what they're doing is, is they were using the engine to, to create a hydraulic pressure. So you got more force on the brakes. And same thing, the drum brakes would stop exactly the same because the physics of the weight of the car and the tire and the grip on the road is exactly the same. But as for a driver, it felt much easier to drive because the engine was assisting the braking so you didn't have to push anywhere near as hard on the pedal. And then we had the introduction of disc brakes on the front of the cars and they had drum brakes on the back and disc brakes on. And there was a certain reason why they did that design and even a lot of vehicles, especially commercial vehicles, have that same combination. They have drum brakes on the back and they have disc brakes on the front. And that is still used today in the latest models, specifically in commercial vehicles. So 
it was the same thing. They were power assisted, now disc brakes. And then, of course, modern cars developed and they went to rear disc brakes as well. Now, people like to relate this to bicycles because we've moved from rim brakes to disc brakes and they say it's, it's like going from drum brakes to disc brakes. But there is some significant differences between cars disc brakes and bicycle disc brakes. Now, if you look at a disc brake on a bicycle, it's just a flat plate, but on a car, the disc brake is actually a fan. It's designed with a fan in it. So as it spins, it's actually sucking air through the center of the disc. Now, this brings me to the point why disc brakes were used. Disc brakes weren't put onto cars and onto bicycles because they stopped the vehicle any quicker because the physics, the, the physical nature of the vehicle, the weight, the contact with the ground, or with a motorcycle or a bicycle, it's the rotating force around the front axle because once the wheel locks up or reaches the point of almost locked up, the back wheel will lift and rotate around the front wheel throwing over the handlebars. So obviously you can't stop any quicker because you're not on the bike. So, but people have, I don't know, people have a huge problem identifying this. And the reason why disc brakes were fitted on cars is not because they stop quicker. They get, they've got a better braking performance. What they've got is a better fade performance. Now, what that means is it means if I stop my car, I'm changing kinetic energy into heat energy and that needs to be put through the brakes. That's why your brakes get hot. Now, a disc brake, because it's got a fan built in and because it's not enclosed like a drum brake, it can dissipate that heat quicker. So then if I try to repeat the same braking event over the same, just immediately after the last one, the disc brake can dissipate the heat quicker. So we will maintain most of the braking effectiveness whilst the drum brake will be getting hot and can't dissipate the heat. So they will fade. And we know this by brake fade. And the disc brakes, when you have a car and they fit to like a performance car, like you have your hot hatches and that, they don't stop any quicker, but because the brake is bigger, it can dissipate more heat. So you can drive the car harder for longer and your brakes won't fade. So disc brakes were brought in to reduce fade, not to increase the braking distance because they just can't because of the physical nature of the vehicle. The vehicle weighs a certain amount. There's a certain amount of contact on the ground and that's just the way it is. That's physics. That's why if you have a heavier car, it takes longer to stop it. It's not that you can just put more brakes on it. Once you reach the limit, you've reached the limit. So some people talk about anti-lock braking and, and putting that on bicycles, which is your ABS, and that stands for anti-lock braking system. Now, the reason why they put anti-lock braking system on cars is not to make the car stop quicker. But what happens is when you're in a car and you put the brakes on too hard, especially with power assist, because it's much easier to lock up because it, it, you have that extra power like you do with disc brakes on a, hydraulic disc brakes on a bike, you have that extra power. It's easier to lock up the, the wheels or reach the lock up stage because they're assisted. And it's the same in a car. But in a car, when you get to the point where the wheels lock up, the car is then skidding and the tire because it's skidding across the road when you turn the steering wheel it, the car doesn't respond the car just keeps going straight until it stops so if there's something you want to avoid you can't so what the anti-lock braking system does it senses the wheels locked and actually releases the brakes and pulses the brakes on and off like this so the wheels keep turning and then you can still maintain the steering of your car ABS or anti-lock braking system doesn't allow the car to stop quicker. It just allows you to maintain control of the vehicle. Now I hope that's really clear on the different braking systems that we have in cars. So I hope that kind of now clarifies the history of braking. Disc brakes were put onto cars to allow or reduce fade. They do not stop the car any quicker. So why the hell now do we have disc brakes on, on road bikes? Why did they put them on? Well, the single reason was is because of carbon clincher failures, because the braking track is right at the point where the hook is. And when the carbon gets to around about 200 degrees C, a little bit, I think it's about 210, 220, the carbon starts to soften. And because you have 800 PSI behind those hooks, it pushes the hooks out 
and then the tire blows off the rim and obviously the the rim fails now of course this has a huge liability for wheel manufacturers and they tried all sorts of things uh, different resins and all sorts of stuff and either they couldn't perfect it or they didn't want to spend the money to use the better resins for whatever reasons the industry decided we're going to move the bake track away from the clincher area and make a disc brake bike like we do with mountain bikes and that was the driver it had nothing to do with increasing the braking performance of the bike now if you're running aluminium rims on your rim brake or you're running tubulars on your rim brake that problem of carbon clincher failures does not exist or at least it's significantly reduced so the whole reason why we got disc brakes on road bikes is because of carbon clincher flare it's not because they perform any better because they don't now we can argue in different weather conditions and all this sort of stuff and people go on about the modulation and and the, it's easier for the the rider to stop quicker they they're all complete non non arguments because the modulation is only the increments between full off and full on and in theory a disc brake should have more modulation but that doesn't make you stop quicker all it does is just give you more increments between full on and full off and actually because they've made hydraulic disc brakes so powerful they actually have reduced the modulation because you meet you reach the lockout point far before the lever has fully been pulled back so they've actually reduced it and that's why shimano now have redesigned their hoods and their system to try and increase modulation so the whole modulation argument even though in theory disc brakes should have more modulation because of the way they've been designed by the manufacturers they actually haven't and even if you say oh yeah well the modulation is a good thing the modulation doesn't make you stop any quicker in fact, I've ridden both bikes because a lot of people say, go ride some disc brakes. I've ridden disc brake bikes. And I would actually argue that a rim brake bike with carbon rims with the new pads actually gives you more longer feel before the brakes fully come on and that front wheel starts to lock up. Now, the other thing that I want to address that someone brought up, they go, oh, but it's easier to lock the front wheel up with a, a disc brake hydraulic system. And that's 100% true. But that doesn't make you stop any quicker. And his argument was, oh, the wheel rotates a couple of times on a rim brake before the braking starts to work. Now, well, really, that's just that's just complete rubbish, right? Because the, the time it takes for you to move that hand before those rubbers contact the, the rim and the disc the, the time is milliseconds it would have no significant difference on the braking distance and a rim brake has the advantage that you actually have less leverage and the wheels bigger so it's easier for the wheel to maintain rotation because as within a car and the ABS system you do not want the wheels to lock up you do not want the wheels to lock up on a car and you do not want the wheels to lock up on a bike because as soon as the wheel locks up on a bike you're over the handlebars so the reality is that rim brakes have some advantages and disc brakes have some advantages and I've been through that in many videos but as soon as you say that they they break the same in normal weather conditions your normal riding weather conditions people just lose their mind it's like it's, you can't say that it's like okay, that's misinformation that's wrong you've got to take this video down it's not go do some research on braking systems start off with cars go and google it abs what is it disc brake why did cars change from uh, drum brakes to to disc brakes why and the reason why disc brakes are still used is because they're more effective to hold stationary vehicles like trucks and heavy commercial vehicles because when you put the handbrake on you have no engine assist and the drum brakes can put more force on and that's why they're used on commercial vehicles so drum brakes still have some advantages for commercial vehicles and they're still used today it's just a different technology that has different benefits and different pros and cons it's the same with disc brakes on bikes but let me tell you right now the different braking system doesn't change how quick you can stop the car that's all got to do with tire grip the type of rubber on your tire and the weight of the vehicle that's it that's physics that's the fact that's where i'm going to leave it guys see you next vid take care